Are you undecided between the Canon EOS 7D Mark II or the Canon Rebel T6, also known as the 1300D, but you want to know if they're still a good idea to buy in 2023? In this review, we'll discuss their strengths and weaknesses so you can figure out which one is best for your needs. So, to start off with, which lens can I use with these cameras? Both Canon EF and EFS lenses are compatible with these cameras. Some examples of these lenses include the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 and the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens. Additionally, the compatibility extends to many more lenses, including third-party options, giving you a wide variety of choices. If you are interested in these lenses, you can check out their reviews along with other lenses by clicking on the links below or the card located in the top right corner. What about storage? Do they have a dual SD card slot? The 7D Mark II offers this feature while the T6 does not. Typically, high-end cameras have this feature and it isn't available on entry-level or mid-level. With this feature, each photo can be saved on both cards simultaneously, providing real-time backups which can be useful. In the case of Pro Gigs, photos can be recovered even if one SD card fails, since the second SD card has a copy. Despite the slim chances of SD card failures, having multiple SD cards in rotation can reduce the chances of data loss. Furthermore, you have the option to disregard the backup function and employ each card individually. By doing so, you effectively increase your storage capacity twofold. As a quick side note, the 7D Mark II has a dual slot, but it's not two SD cards. One slot takes SD cards and the other takes CF cards. On a different note, how are they in terms of connectivity? Do they have Wi-Fi capability? The Rebel T6 does, but unfortunately the 7D Mark II does not. What about Bluetooth? Neither the T6 nor the 7D Mark II have Bluetooth connectivity. And NFC? Surprisingly, only the T6 has NFC, while the 7D Mark II does not. Okay, so is their size an issue? The dimensions of the 7D Mark II are 148.6x112.4x78.2mm, by by or 5.85x4.43x3.08inch, by and it weighs about 820 grams or 28.92 ounces. On the other hand, the T6 measures 129 by 101.3 by 77.6 millimeters, or 5.08 by 3.99 by 3.06 inches, and weighs around 485 grams or 17.11 ounces. As you can see, the 7D Mark II is definitely beefier than the T6. The 7D Mark II also has a stronger build quality as it is crafted using magnesium alloy while the T6 is made of a combination of carbon fiber, glass fiber and polycarbonate resin. If you want to learn the main reason why the 7D Mark II has a much better build, stick around until the end of the review to find out. Wink wink. What about their displays? Both cameras feature back screens of decent quality that are fixed in place, making them adequate for menu navigation and photo checking but unsuitable for vlogging due to the lack of articulation. The 7D Mark II, however, has a small LCD on the top that not only looks stylish, but also allows for a quick and easy check of settings. Although some may not appreciate the appearance of the LCD, I personally find it visually pleasing. Now, these two devices are rather versatile. How long do they function before they run out of battery? The 7D Mark II includes an LPE6N battery that allows you to take around 650 shots, while the T6 has an LPE10 battery that yields approximately 500 pictures. Nevertheless, battery life may depend on other factors, like how frequently you use the display, air temperature and battery age. It is recommended to carry extra batteries with you, specifically when working with others, in case they are required. If you find this video helpful so far, you can show your appreciation by hitting the like button. Additionally, if you'd like to buy any of the items mentioned in this review, you can find affiliate links below in the description or in the pinned comment. Equally important is what should you expect in terms of image quality? The type of lens that you use can significantly impact the pictures that you take. However, for now, let's focus on the camera itself since I am unaware of your choice of lens. Firstly, let's consider the sensors of both cameras. 
The 7D Mark II has a 20.2 megapixel 22.4 by 15 mm APS-C sensor, while the T6 has a similarly sized 18 megapixel 22.3 by 14.9 mm APS-C sensor. You may also want to take into account the processor of these cameras. The 7D Mark II has the Digic 6 processor, while the T6 uses the Digic 4 Plus. You may be wondering what upgrades the Digic 6 and 4 Plus added to Canon cameras. The 6th generation of Digic processors brought about several improvements, such as better low-light performance, less delay when compared to earlier models, and the ability to shoot 1080p video at 60 frames per second, among other features. As for the 4th Digic iteration, it provides a swifter image processing rate than the older versions, better noise reduction for high ISO images, and the capacity to record H.264 1080p videos. What about ISO? The 7D Mark II's ISO ranges from 100 to 16,000, expandable to 51,200, while the T6's ISO ranges from 100 to 6,400, expandable to 12,800. You have to try to keep the ISO on the lower side whenever possible, as increasing it excessively will create unwelcome noise when taking pictures. Moving on to a related point, are they equipped with dual pixel AF? So the 7D Mark II does have it, while the T6 does not. Autofocus is another feature worth considering. The T6 has 9 autofocus points, while the 7D Mark II offers as many as 65 autofocus points. Having dual pixel AF in addition to a higher number of AF points usually means increased autofocusing capability, which can be incredibly helpful, especially in situations where something's happening and you need to take a photo fast. Cool, so what about shutter speed? If you want to capture fast moving subjects, can these cameras do that? So the 7D Mark II has a maximum shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, while the T6 can do 1 4,000th. What if your aim is to take loads of photos one after another, like in wildlife or sports photography? In that case, you're looking for continuous shooting mode. In this mode, the 7D Mark II can do 10 FPS, while the T6 can do 3 FPS. In other words, within one second, the 7D Mark II captures 10 photos, while the T6 captures 3. This is useful if your aim is to capture very fast motion. The more frames you can capture in one second, the higher the possibility you'll capture the precise moment you're looking for. Another important point to consider, are the 7D Mark II and the T6 good for video? The T6 is capable of 1080p at 30fps and 720p at 60fps, whereas the 7D Mark II can do 1080p at 60fps, but both cameras lack the Canon Log feature. Canon Log is a feature that is available on more expensive cameras and provides greater dynamic range. Do either of these cameras have built-in IS? Nope, neither of these cameras have IBIS. Now, most cameras offer digital stabilization, but as a general rule, you should stay away from that. You could try the in-body digital IS, but it is seldom useful. Besides, any stabilization you apply would be irreversible and a backup without stabilization cannot be obtained. It is not really advisable to use the in-body digital IS feature. Instead, it is better to record a shaky video and then use stabilization tools in your preferred software, like Premiere, as this software continually improves. If you want optical stabilization, you can opt for a lens such as the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens, but look for the one with IS in the name. This lens has in-lens stabilization, which is superior to in-camera digital stabilization in every way. Moving on, can you vlog with them? At this point, pretty much any camera can be used for vlogging, but there are a few issues to bear in mind. First off, having a flip screen is ideal, so you can see what you're doing when the camera is turned around. Regrettably, the cameras mentioned do not possess flip screens that would assist you with vlogging and prevent the camera's glass from getting damaged in your backpack. Another factor to consider is the sensor type. In this instance, both models have APS-C sensors that produce more zoomed-in pictures in contrast to full-frame sensors. It is essential to use lenses with shorter focal lengths to compensate for the camera's crop factor and avoid footage that appears too zoomed in. 
The 18-55mm kit lens is a good option for handheld vlogging. You can zoom all the way out to capture more in frame, and if you buy the version with IS, the video will be smoother. In most cases, smoother video is desirable. Another option is using the Canon 24mm pancake lens, which is also wide enough for vlogging. However, the downside is that it doesn't have IS, so the footage will be shakier. If you plan on setting up your camera on a tripod to create content, your lens choices must be adjusted accordingly. Instead of the 18-55mm or 24mm lenses, it would be better for you to look at the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 or f1.8. These lenses have wider apertures that allow more light to enter and create pleasing bokeh, the blurred out background that people enjoy. However, since these lenses are more zoomed in and don't have image stabilization, they are unsuited for handheld vlogging. I have actually reviewed all of these lenses on my channel, and you can check them out via the link provided below, or by clicking the card in the top right corner. Right, so how long will the 7D Mark II and T6 last? So the 7D Mark II has water and dust resistant sealing, while the T6 has no weather sealing. You should handle it cautiously and avoid exposing it to adverse weather conditions. The 7D Mark II can perform about 200,000 actuations, while the T6 maxes out at around 100,000. Cameras are rated for a specific number of photographs before the shutter could break down, due to their mechanical nature. Every click of the camera shutter counts as an actuation. Based on my calculations, 200,000 photos at an average rate of 10 photos per day would last approximately 54 years, and 100,000 actuations at the same rate per day would last for 27 years. Assuming you begin with zero photos, the camera's other parts will likely break before the shutter reaches its limit. Keep in mind that if you buy a used camera, this number may change. When purchasing a camera, Examine the product description to determine how many photos the camera has already taken. What is the purpose of these cameras? Both these cameras are suitable for various types of photography such as portrait, street, product, landscape, wedding, events and documentary work. The lens you opt for is more crucial than the camera when it comes to these kinds of photography. If you intend to take sports or wildlife pictures, Selecting the appropriate lens is not the only factor and can become more complicated. You will need to take other variables into account. The shutter speed has to be fast, and the number of frames per second in continuous mode should be high as they are necessary for capturing fast-moving subjects. As previously mentioned, the 7D Mark II can process 10 FPS continuously, while DT6 can only capture 3 FPS. Furthermore, the 7D Mark II's maximum shutter speed is 1 8,000th of a second, while the T6's is 1 4,000th. I hope this review has been helpful. If you're curious about the cost of these lenses in your area, there are affiliate links down below for your convenience. If you'd like to check out more reviews, you can either look down below for relevant links or click the card in the top right corner. Do you have any questions? Feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.